That's fine. Oh, we're live. I usually wait to go live, and I was shooting the shit with Dylan, getting stuff going. He had a booger. Uh, welcome, everybody, to Historically Haunted Podcast, Episode 2, with my guest, Dylan the Booger. Uh, Dylan and Gray from Plymouth, Massachusetts. Uh, Dylan is the horror collector, the high horror collector. Um, right on Instagram, he's got a huge collection of horror. And, um, and Becca, what's up, Becca Thomas? Hey, Becca says hey, right in. Dude, we seriously were going off for, like, what, five minutes thinking we were alive? And we weren't is it just now. So uh, welcome, Dylan. Say hi to the folks watching. Say hi to everybody. Hey, hey. Thanks for coming. That's it. He's a simple dude. He's having a good weekend. Just staying safe. You know? His voice is a little low, but it's, we're having a little medical thing, so turn your volumes up, and I'll just talk lower. Can you hear me? Sean Babbitt says, hey. So, so Dylan, um, you you went to uh, Plymouth High School. You grew, grew up in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Is that correct? You grew up there pretty much. Yeah. I okay. I, I was looking into the history, and it says that today's the day that they landed on the Mayflower. Then I heard some. I mean, I'm sorry, on Plymouth Rock. And then I heard something, or I saw something that December 21st in 1620, which is next week, they hit Plymouth Rock. So this isn't decidable, but whatever the fuck ever, because like. We're going to talk about a little bit about Plymouth Rock because you know a little bit about some really cool pirates, some frozen type uh, pirates at sea and a lot of cool shit. We're going to jump into that. Um, for those of you who don't know, Dylan also, um, like I said, he's a horror collector. He also collects stuff from horror movies, horror genre. But he's got, in my opinion, besides Tony Sparrow, probably the biggest Ed Warren collection I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? When did you start collecting uh Warren family and Ed Warren case memorabilia and paintings and stuff. Um, well, it all started with The Conjuring. Um, I saw it when it came out on DVD, so it must have been like, I think it came out in 2013, so it was like probably 2014. Um, I wasn't even into it at the time. My wife was, she was the horror buff. And one day she just kind of, you know, she said, we're going to watch it. And, I didn't want to watch it, but I did, and um, I realized at the end that they were real people, and they start, you know, they show the real um, pictures and whatnot across the screen, and they show the parent families, and it just, I don't know, it just intrigued me from there. I started doing my research, and uh, I think within the next year or two was when I got my first painting that I which is an old one too, he did it in 1965. So when I got it, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Um, but yeah. So you dove in head first, really, being in, being intrigued by the cases and the real life aspect of it. Um, Cause I like, I mean, I'm like you, I love my James. We talked about it today, me and Dylan have been going back and forth all day. He's, he's a lot of me, he's a good shit. Um, very modest, but he's got a great collection. I mean, you're into horror, you're into Freddy, you're into Jason, you're into Halloween. But at the same time, the Warrens bring a whole aspect of reality, which is obviously more terrifying. What do we get there? Oh, Pennywise. That, that's my boy. I'm from Maine. I'm a Steve King. Nothing. And Heckler's from the, uh, uh, what the hell is the name of it? I can't think. Muppet Show. <laughs> there you go. I'm stoned. You're going to be with me. <laughs> like I said, I mean, sometimes, sometimes they like to heckle me, but. I can't be the only one that likes to talk to my toys, right? My toys talk to yeah. me. Yeah. Everybody deserves a kick in the ass from something, whether it's real or not. Hey. Someone just came home from work. <laughs> oh. Live. Have a put her head in for a minute. Say hi. Come in front of this man. Come in. Right in front of it. We, we, we get to see what... Oh, you know. No, there she is. Hey. We saw you for a quick second at the Warren Con this year, the Warren Family Paracon. Um, very good to see you. You're just getting in, but. That's a lovely wife. Um, Polly yeah, says yeah. hello. Polly King. Heather Kimmini says hello. Becca Thomas says hello. You got a couple people in chat. Chris Thomas says what's up. Um, 
Yeah, we're talking to Dylan. Dylan, Dylan uh, Ray, he's the horror collector. Like he says, he doesn't proclaim to be a demonologist, a paranormal type guy, whatever. He just, he loves to collect. And, and I wanted to bring him on. Of course, being from Plymouth, I thought it was the Plymouth Rock Landing, which is more or less next week I was misled. But they say today also is the first encounter day when Miles Standish encountered Native Americans coming off the boat in 1620. It's the first encounter. So, uh, oh, cheers. So that's today too. But let's talk a little bit about your boy. You, you, uh, you, good boy. For those of you at home, it's Saturday night. Let the fuck up. Anyway, let's talk about um, these bounty hunters at sea. You can tell the story better than you just schooled me today on it. But please enlighten the folks at home. Uh, you talking about the shipwreck? Yeah, the colonel, their uh, captain, what's the face? I forget now. General Arnold it was the name of the ship. It was um, it was actually, it happened like a couple hundred feet from like right where you were standing when you took that photo by Plymouth Rock. They were... The, what's left of Plymouth Rock? <laughs> yeah. That's another story for another day. Yeah. Um, <coughs> That's a whole nother hour show. <coughs> yeah. It was uh, the late 1700s, and I want to say about 80 men died. And they are buried in a mass grave that is right around the corner from my apartment. It's, um, they don't have like their names like individually. It's just like a little dedication piece that they have for them there. And uh, supposedly it was rather um, disturbing when they did discover it because they were frozen, standing up and in different positions. And um, a little bit. You said they were frozen in the positions on the ship, like they literally froze in time. Like the fucking, like, uh, I don't know, like the cop or whatever from Terminator 2. He just stared and he's like, that's pretty wild. And to see that, must be or you grow up in Plymouth, of course, Plymouth Rock, Plymouth Plantation, Plymouth, that stuff must have been through high school. Of course, Salem, too. Who doesn't love Salem and Boston and everything? So, grow up. Oh, there we go. It might be a bad connection. The Wi-Fi is not the best. Yeah, you were frozen on my end. Yeah. All right. Hey, Chris Sanders, can everybody hear me right now? Someone write anything. Like, literally the word anything in chat. You can see this. Right? Fuck you. Okay. I may have to move this broadcast to a better Wi-Fi spot. What's the OG doing? What's the OG? He's gone. He's fixing his connection. I'm the only one that's in there. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep him in the office. All right, are we there? All right, we there? Sorry about that, everybody. The weather in Maine's really rainy and the Wi-Fi and yada yada technical difficulties. We don't have sponsors yet, so fuck it. Someone wants to if someone wants to sponsor us, we'll have a better show. I ran up the stairs. I'm fucking plugging shit in. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Crew. Cool. Can you life? hear me, Dylan? Clear. Yeah, you sound good. Sorry about that, dude. Heather, say hi. Hello. There's Heather Witching Cave and Evie. Trying to fix this uh, Wi-Fi here. All right. Oh, that's cool, dude. You know, I love... Anyway, um, much better. Thank you, Becca. This was what yeah. I was trying to show, is this book. Oh, yes, Gerald Arnold. Yeah. Ooh, if that kid's trying to catch his breath. All right, we're good. <laughs> I hold, I'm like, ah, I fucking, I unplugged it from the wall. I ran upstairs. I think I might have tipped my beer over. I don't fucking know. I'm just like, oh, man. 
and I'm coming up. I'm like, I need the room. <laughs> oh, sorry about that shit. I forgot totally where I was. So, yeah, so we're talking about the Arnold, the ship where everybody was frozen solid right on the ship. Yes. Yeah. And, the, of course, the burial ground, which you're going to bring me once we go down there and have uh, a beer together this, this spring or something. You're going to be my host, host with the most in, in Plymouth. So let's let's start doing some show and tell, man. Let's crank out some some shit. I'm, I'm watching, and I'm jealous of your stuff. You've got some Ed Warren originals, man, and that's some pretty cool shit. Yeah, I'm up to 13 right now. And you just got your 13th one in. Number 13, right? Number the plate? 13, yep. Yeah. All right. We sound better, guys. I know I was freezing. Thanks, Leo. Yeah. Ollie, what's going on? Chris Sanders, what's up, brother? I know it's probably I sound better. Look at this piece. Ed Warren painted that. 1965. And I take it the barn door thing came with it. That's what he used for a background frame. Yeah. He would take the cabinets off the piece of wood and fasten it right onto here you can see little uh oops right there little screws on each side and then he would just paint right on there couple's got a running joke of uh he's uh running short on cabinets all over monroe because ed warren was busting into all the <laughs> <He'd be busting laughs> people's houses and stealing all the cabinet doors i tell you what dude if ed warren came to my house he could take whatever the fuck he wanted that's for sure but that's gorgeous. I love that. He was, I mean, you know, he was, hey, Betsy, what's up? I'm finally getting back now. I got, I was, bad start. We had a bad breakup a little bit, but we're talking better. Uh, people are saying Dylan's a little distant, but Dylan sounds better. But look at that piece. That is Ed Warren original that he got with the cabinet door. That's a beautiful piece that he painted. Um, and Dylan, you've had, uh, you've had your own um, tours of the Warren Occult Museum. Of course, you know Jimmy, Mr. Haunted, and he gives you tours and um, you know a lot of them, so you know the family as well. You pretty much, like you told me today, you met pretty much everyone except for Chris McKennell and his sister Heather, <laughs> for the most part. Um, yeah. Tell us about your time there. What's it like? To I mean, me and Heather, we did get to go to the house with, with Chris. Um, we didn't go in the museum, but that must be something of, I mean, it's on everybody's list of number one in the world, like most haunted, most. What's it like? Is it, I, I got to know. I mean, I got to know. You probably can't put it into words, but. It's, uh, I think it's, it's a little smaller than you expect it to be, but once you're in there, in the small little area, there's so much stuff, you can't, you can't take it all in from, from one time, you just can't. I mean, it's, wow, and that's a lot in one room, too, and when you think about it, they could open that up full-time and charge people. They were, they were goes, well, they're in it for the money for the movies. Well, people came to them for the movies. They weren't about it. They could make money off this shit, but they know how hardcore evil it is, and they don't have the right setup, so they're not going to let people go in there. I see a lot of these people online selling haunted dolls and haunted shit left and right to people without even credentials, and you got to be careful who you do it to, and I don't see them into it. You know, Betsy Brown giving us hearts. What's up, Betsy? Oh, we got Danny. Hi, guys. I can barely hear Dylan's audio. Danny Perez. He loves you, Danny. Danny, he's on his phone. His laptop's being a bitch, so he's trying to get it. So I know you got to turn. What you guys need to do is turn it up, and I need to lower my voice so I can be equal with him. <laughs> I'm a loud guy. Um, shit, Dylan, you got a lot of Danny Perez's coffin board Ouija's and graveyard dirt and coffin nails, don't you? Please? I said please. There you have to. I want to show you something else first. I want to show you my... It's not an original, but it's my favorite one that Ed ever did. I, I have a print. Ooh. There's another Ed Warren original. There's Amityville. That's the Amityville house. The eyes. Those eyes alone. I know they've changed them recently, but that's the original Amityville house. Wow. Original. It's a print. But this is my favorite one out of all. Ever. That's your that's your favorite? I could barely hear you on that one. You said that's your favorite? It's my favorite one out of all of them. It's not original. It's, it's a print. I don't know. I'm assuming that Tony has 
that's the original one. Oh, so that's not an original, but still a print. I mean, I'd love to have anything from, from Ed. Get out. Wow, the de demon. See, you know what's funny? I don't know about you, but watching as a kid, watching Amityville, they didn't, in the originals, they don't mention Ed and Lorraine that I remember. I mean, I watch them all the time, and I always try to look for it. I never find it. I mean, I didn't really know Ed and Lorraine did that case until, got to be 2010 or something like that, 2008, maybe I found out. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't involved in those. They weren't in the movies, rather, back then. No. Well, they, didn't, they weren't in it for that. They were in it to help people. Oh, John Wood says, yo, 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 Dylan, what's up? John. <laughs> Get some oh, there. dude, you sound way better. Get excited again because you sound way better when you're excited. You're louder. <laughs> oh, shit. Can you hear me better like this? I fucking... Everybody, you can hear you way better now, dude. Shit. Yeah, absolutely. But you can't um, see my face. No, I know. We can't. Um, hold something else up. <laughs> I had a whole list of shit I wanted to show you downstairs, so I'm gonna have to have Heather, Heather take over for a second so I can we'll go, go grab it. Danny stuff, right? I'll go now. grab yeah, it. Yeah, because I wanted to give Danny a little shout out. Not to... hey, you want to grab? Uh, it's the DVDs, my brick, and the mask. I'm back. You could. Wow, I'm way bigger on your computer, huh? How'd you get so big? <laughs> I'm talking to Heather. How'd you? No, seriously, how'd you get so big? How'd you get it? Oh shit! Oh, dude. See, it's my second podcast. Like, you, how do you get the chat on there, though? I'm really not as stupid as I appear. I just, I'm like not super. I don't know how to get the chat though. Shit. Ooh, that's my girl Lizzie. Oh, I love her so much. That's my girl. Heather knows it. Look, it's got the murder farewell. It's got the father on the couch that I've laid on, and it's got the the stepmother upstairs in the Morris room, the dead room. And me and Heather stayed there all alone, and I, I laid in that spot, and I got a picture of me in that position. And there's my girl, Lizzie. God, she's gorgeous. Tell you what, nothing really, nothing gets to your heart quicker than a girl that can kill people. <laughs> it just, <clears throat> I don't think she did it myself, but. Lauren and Dan, shout out to the Perez's. Oh, yeah, man, I was all stoned in back of their hearse over at the Parafest uh, in Portland. Danny Radical. Yeah, Danny's good people. I love Danny. Every time I see him, I just want to hug him. Pinch his cheeks, coroner hat and shit. Nice he's fucking, he's good people. Very Laura very too. Going guy, easy to talk. Very good people. Good people in the family. Chicken foot. <laughs> Some fucking sick shit. If you guys are out there Christmas shopping, Danny can get you Christmas coffin nails. What what says Christmas to your kids and coffins and coffin nails in their sock? My fucking mom would if she was still alive. Love you, mom. My mom was into that morbid shit. Monsters and Twilight Zone. That sounds like a graveyard cool dirt. Yeah. yeah, graveyard dirt. Oh, I love it. I get shit on for yeah. taking rocks from graveyards and dirt. People go, "You shouldn't do that." I go, "What the fuck?" No one. But people shit on me. They always, wherever I go places, they always make sure I don't take nothing. I used to have a lot of stuff. You know, I used to have golf balls from places. There's a girl in Poland, Maine. That's a hitchhiker. She's buried in her. Where she's buried is in the middle of a. Look at that. What a girlfriend. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> she brought me all my stuff from downstairs that I had to run away from. My... Oh, so real quick. Look, there it is. This is the brick from H.H. Holmes, America's first serial killer, Herman Webster Mudgett. This was a brick that was in his walkway. Uh, I went one day and I got a video of me talking to the current owner in Gilmington, New Hampshire. I know his murder castle was in Chicago. I get it. But I went there uh, on a whim in my Mustang, dude. And uh, I told the grocery, because you must be here for H.H. H. Holmes. I'm like, well, yeah. And uh, it's an 1845 clap house. And she goes, we're going to do in the, the brickyard or the walkway. She was outside. I go, do you mind if I have a brick? She goes, well, as long as you don't do any satanic rituals with it. I go, and I promise, cross my black heart and hope to die. So I've had it for like five years. And, of course, I get no documentation or nothing with it. But I know what it is. I don't plan on getting rid of it. But uh, that's my trophy piece. Because it's America's first serial killer, even though I don't condone that. Don't kill anybody, guys. You kids at home. No. How did I get that? See, I get full screen, but I can't get chat, too. So that sucks. I'm going to stay on the little screen, then. It's not the size of your screen. It's how you use it. So, Dylan, what do you want to talk about, man? What, uh, I heard you're going to be an author soon. You're going to be doing a little writing. Is that a possibility we're hearing? Hiring? Yeah, I've been, I've been working on... Um little stuff in the background you could say 
How's my audio right now? Is it better? Oh, dude, it's so much better. I wish I could read and start the show. I'm just kidding. You were fine the whole time, but you sound fucking like, like, pretend that you were like weed earlier. You would probably like, you know, decent 90s weed, but now you're like fucking medical, like high grade. Yeah, your breath smells, your breath is like dope. <laughs> so, um, on a serious note, because I don't want to act like we're all just dubs here. Um, oh, my little, my little Annabelle. Um, so how close are you and Mr. Jimmy? I heard you got to go meet Mr. Johnny Zappas, the nephew of Ed and Lorraine Warren, possibly at some point. Maybe I don't want the cat out of the bag, but you're real close with the guys. They speak highly of you. Eric Vitel, um, they all speak very highly. Danny Perez are all like, oh, he's a great guy to have on. Um, he's his, um, so yeah, but just let you know, um, Dildo or Stoner Jesus, as they call you, um, your wife's telling me, ah, I'm going to put that online so you can see it. Look online, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, Gildo. <laughs> I hear her laughing. That's funny. Your wife's funny. Oh, uh, look at her laughing. What, she's fucking, she's got a personality. We saw you guys at the Warren Con, which is great. Look at Heather bringing me everything. That's a fucking woman. Sit down and smoke a joint, Heather. You deserve it. So everybody, real quick, plug. Heather's first show was last night. It was her first guest. Um, it's every third, oh, two nights ago, every Thursday, Boy, dildo, FYI. every second and fourth Thursday, Witch and Life Guide Show, Paranormal King Radio Network. I'm leaving it up there, the rest of the show. She just cut you in oh, half. She just cut you in half. Oh, my fuck. Wait a Burn, go. David. David, burn. Oh, but, but we're getting hearts for the dildos. We're getting hearts for Stoner Jesus today. Oh, so, boy. um... <laughs> <laughs> I told you this I'll is a laid back it. show, brother. Just be yourself, have fun right with it. Now with my Statler and Waldorf. Oh, I love that. You uh, let's it. real quick. Um, can you move the phone around with you or are you tied down? I want to see your pop collection. I want everybody to see your signed pops. Give me one sec. And you can talk about that a little bit about all the Mike Myers and Jason Voorhees and Kane Harders you've met. Very modest collection. Nothing wrong with that. I only have one myself, but very cool. You want to, anyone you want to point out, talk about him. Feel free, brother. So these are the money ones up top, pretty much. These are um, the most expensive ones that I have. The Chases. I got Chase Freddy, Chase Mikey, Chase Jason. This one's actually it's one of one thousand and eight. It just it has. Is that Jason it. without his mask? Yes. Oh my god, yeah. that's the mask I got right here, the original. Oh. And it came. Why you do the show? It came with the hockey mask and Kane Hodder signed it. Kane seven eight nine and X. When I met him at Rock and Shock in Massachusetts, I'll put it on. Well, I got my headphones on. But... Oh, I love, and I love that Elvira one. I believe the Elvira one came out last week or a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, that one's limited. That's uh, 2016. It's a 1500 piece. That's one of the Funko ones that they have for her. I think that one's at about 310 or 320 right now. Can you hear me? Don't take my exact word. You look so much better like that. Oh, I hear that from all the girls and guys. Can you hear me? We're coming at you live. Can you hear me now? Oh, uh, I wish I could. I try to drive with it, but Heather gets pissed. <laughs> we drive around in an, in an old police truck, black and white police truck, and everybody gets fucking pissed and scared. Ooh, Pennywise. So uh, I'm going to take this off because it's... You said it came. <laughs> it's wicked hot in here, and I can barely hear you, so... Can you hear me now? Oh, there's Kane Hodder. That's my favorite. He's a paranormal investigator, too. Yeah. Oh. Did I really die? Yeah, see, so yeah, I push. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Oh, man, my fucking headphones are done. All right. I think, he, all right, now I think I can hear better. These are Dollar Tree headphones, so. We go with nothing but the best here at the Historically Haunted Podcast show on BBT TV and it worked. It was five below. Five below, whatever. <laughs> we need sponsors. 
Oh, look at that. Yes. Your wife says it's not even the half of it. <laughs> Does your wife have a collection too? Does she collect this shit or she just lets you get away with murder all the time and spend all this money on all this shit? She... Yeah, you let her do her thing. Oh, you get the screen guy. That's Kayler Sydney Prescott. Yeah. That's a custom. Sydney. Ooh. Yeah. Dirt it's funny you I messaged me because you were saying how. In the reboot. Oh, yes. That was. um. Uh, shit. Not Jason, not Sean Younger. Who the fuck played the new Jason? I forget now. Derek Mears. Yes, Derek Mears. I met Derek Mears at Rock and Shock. Right here. He signed to Adam. He goes, what do you want me to put? I go, to, I go right, kill them all. To Adam, kill them all. Derek Mears, Jason. He also My played Swamp Thing. in uh, Derek Mears story, but I don't know if she know. wants to tell it. Oh, Courtney, you have to now. She's already saying just dildos. Any this girl that says just dildos has to tell a story. Courtney, tell the story. Custom Dr. Chalice, and he even wrote, I could use a drink on it, Tom Atkins. Oh, Season of the Witch. Yeah. Courtney, you got to tell your story about fucking Derek Mears. Just dildos. She collects iced coffee cups. <laughs> he got her. He got her. That's... Four below. It's a burn. Yes, Lauren Perez. Kane is an awesome guy. Man, at Rocket Shock. I did too. He signed my mask and my my DVD. Um, awesome that you're uh, timing it, Lauren. Awesome. Uh oh, Betsy wants to know if you want to get her pissed. <laughs> She's a Southern girl from Arkansas. We don't want that. So she must have asked a question or something. Let me see. What? What's going on? Do you guys have questions for him? I forgot we're on a podcast. Hello, guys. Can you hear? Can hear you, Adam, but not your guest. Okay. Thank you, Patricia. I think it's better in now. You guys probably hear him now. Yeah, right? Yes, if you can hear him better. Yeah, I can hear you better now, I think. Rick Colum, Betsy. I don't, awesome. I don't know. I'm not quite sure who that is, but that's awesome. I don't know who that is. Uh, Courtney Gray writes, Derek was blatantly staring at my chest and caught himself and apologized to me and the guy behind me to told him it's not good when the predator looks at you because he played the predator. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, your fucking wife's awesome. <laughs> Busted. Uh, we got a question from Mr. Leo Austin Powers. What's your favorite place? Or uh, I'm sorry, what's your favorite piece? I don't know if he means collectible horror, collectible war and stuff. What's your favorite piece of uh, of different things, I guess, so to speak? What's your favorite pop or whatever? Um, that's a tough one. Right here, I'll leave that. I'll leave that up, and you can interpret it how you want. I don't know what it, what he's Cousin actually pertaining to. He's... Cousin Leo wants to know what my favorite piece is. Cousin Leo. Yeah, we know Cousin Leo in this house. That's for sure. I'm trying to find one of the ones that he got me so I could pull it up, but I don't know where it is. Oh, see, he wants you to he wants you to name drop him. My dear, oh, thank you, baby. No, no, he no. wants you to name drop him so he can show you the piece that he bought you. I fucking get it. He's one of those yeah, deals, that's, that's cousin Leo. Me. That's just me showing. Nah, me. look, cousin Leo's coming right now. It's the piece I got him. <laughs> Oh shit, that's horrifying. That's from uh, not Critters, but um, Fun House. Shit, what movie is that from? What is it? The Fun House. The Fun House. Okay, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. John Cahill says, "What's up? What's up, Heather? Heather's watching my girl. What's up, to everybody?" Um, John Cahill, sorry, was that supposed to be a smiling face? Uh, favorite collective, favorite collectible. That's what he meant to say. Your cousin Leo, Big Lee. Or as we call him, Uncle Fester. That would be an accurate statement. We want nothing but the truth here. Oh, that's cool. It's done good. What is that? We got a little toy there. Oh, Amityville Horror had toys? Jesus Christ, no kidding. Wow. 
got Boss Brolin in his undies for the backdrop. Yeah. yeah. You know. Wow. It doesn't get more gangster than Boss Brolin in his undies going to investigate. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a gift that keeps on giving. I want some Amityville fucking horror toys. Liz, what's up? Liz. Liz, caught, Liz, Liz is our neighbor. She's our resident witch down the street, too. We got a lot of people. We got uh, we got about ten people watching right now, keeping up with you. A lot of people are uh, are definitely um, in the comments. I can't post them all, but they're all blown away by your collection. Leo says I'm fucking down in like three <laughs> seconds. <for you. laughs> I'm driving down. Come on down, you get on the camera too, Lee. Big Leo, oh, no. Leo the Virgo, Leo the fucking Leo the Aquarius. What is that? Oh, look at that. That's an original. Look, I'm smoking a butt. I think I got like five out of the thirty-five Amityville movies. Boss Brolin, don't fuck around. Don't you don't fuck around. No. So um, let's see what else can we talk about. We're right at the nine thirty mark. We got a half hour at least to kill. Things are flowing pretty good. You are having fun, right, Big D? <laughs> I got you, Big D. Yeah. I, I don't see uh, no Jimmy. I want my audio to be clear and stuff, you know. It is clear. It's clear like that. And when you're showing shit, it's still there. But it's a little discreet or whatever. But it's definitely better. People are liking it better. I wish uh, Jimmy was tuning in. Maybe they'll tune in later. But Jimmy and Fred Williams and Eric, but they'll catch you. Yeah, they will. I, um, I, let's see. You gotta, you gotta get up work tomorrow. Let me show you. I got this sign when me and Heather, my mom, died in 2019, about two months after Lorraine, and I and I got a little bit of money, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna do with it instead of buying drugs and alcohol, I'm gonna go meet fucking Annabelle. So we did a night with Annabelle, like 200 bucks a pop, drove down to Monroe, Connecticut, and I get to meet Father Plato, got to meet Rick Smith, got to meet Jimmy, got to meet Chris Gloria, and got to meet Dean Rivera, got to meet one of the referees from WWF was there as a guest. Yeah, John Cohn. I, get, I saw him. I go, you're John Cohn. You refereed the Rock and, and, uh, the Rock and John Cena match. So that was cool. I got a picture with him. But at long story short, um, and I don't display this much because I don't have a lot of friends, but um, Annabelle. As everybody knows, uh, where is it? The one that Judy's actually portrayed in, even though she was much older. I got her to sign out back uh, to Adam Loving Prayers, the real Judy Warren. And then I got Tony. So I got some cool shit, too. I got, like, I met the guy from Jaws. Like you were saying, you and me both got to meet the dude from Halloween at uh, Count Orloff's in Salem. We were actually there. You and me were at a lot of places, brother, at the same time. We didn't even know it. Warren Con. Warren Con, I mean, there's 2,000 people in and out, but we were there. We passed by each other. I'm 90% sure of it, but we're both in awe. Um, I don't go to many conventions. I'm not one to kiss these. Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> this is the season. <laughs> Fucking elf. Oh. Closer. Does someone need a hug? See, I love that. I love that side of you where you're dark, you're kind of deep, but you get that funny sense of humor side too. It's okay to laugh and like comedies. You don't have to be all horror shit, which I love horror, UFOs, monsters, all that shit. But I love my little comedies. I love my little stupid shit, and it's you gotta laugh in life, dude. You know that, brother. Yeah, especially when you're, you know, always talking about stuff like that that has to do with, you know, like you said, darker type of stuff. Absolutely. Just gotta break it up. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, I'm listening to you. I'm giving. I, I talk over talk people sometimes. My ADD, so I'm trying to give oh. you space. My girlfriend Heather really loves your kitty. That's looking herself, oh, cleaning herself. Kitty behind Dylan. Okay, that is. Um, let's see. That's my girl Heather, with Annabelle. That would be Brucey, Mr. Bruce. I love when people name their cats human names. He's our oldest cat. He is. Cat is gonna handle it. Heather. Very friendly. He's the most relaxed one out of the bunch. We have three. He's the only boy. Bruce, come here. Come here for the camera. Hey, boy. Oh, your your old lady's active. She puts you in your place. <gasps> I love that shit. Oh, she's you got a two of them. She thinks that she's tough and shit. I don't know. I don't know what's gotten in her. She's feeling. Well, you can take it out. Take you can take it out later in other ways. We'll, we'll keep that PG though. What's up with the black cat that's behind your head? Kind of. That's a cutie too. 
Oh, she's a bitch. She's oh, a bitch. it's definitely a girl. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. Yeah, it is. Yep. Uh, the black one is Beatrice. Oh my god, that is adorable. I know everybody watching paranormal motherfuckers love their black cats and black birds, and that is a Salem cat. Look at the eyes, gorgeous. Look at you. You live in Plymouth. You live where where all the shit went down. The first massacre ever. Well, people say that saying. Uh, St. Augustine. A lot of shit was discovered by the Vikings East Coast, but Plymouth Rock is it is what it is. And um, what's what's your mascot in Plymouth High School? I gotta ask. What do you guys call the rocks or like what? Uh, Plymouth ponies. Plymouth, I mean, they might have changed it now. I don't know. When I went, it was Plymouth South Panthers. There's there's a North Plymouth South. South, and I don't. No know kidding. I didn't know that. The North one was, but. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Yeah, and this, that's the yeah, that's Beatrice. No shit. Oh, that's cool. Good animals. Uh, Mr. Bruce is awesome. Uh, Betsy said, um, "Cool people are active in chat. That's awesome. I love how Heather is watching and sitting near you. Oh, that's cool. We support each other. I mean, even the radio show uh, two nights ago, we were doing all the same thing, and we're just having fun with this." Um, Dylan, what was the first thing when I asked you to be on the show? What's the first thing you said? You're like, merely me? Why me? I don't really, I'm a normal dude. And I go, that's what I want. I don't want pompous people who think they're the shit, who want TV and want a fucking contract. I want people that are cool and they're just in this for fun. We only live one life, man. And you're enjoying your life and you've got a crazy collection. Give us a scan of some more shit, dude. We get 20 minutes. What's up? Give us some scan of some stuff. All right. I got some stuff over here. I'm going to, I'm going to sit down and do what I had intended originally and just pull this stuff out so here we go yeah take a hit take a drink you know me man i don't it's, it's we're in this to fucking be lax and have fun <coughs> things from the amityville collection is an original that's actually signed by jay anson and a lot of people might not know but jay anson is the author and he struggled to uh, finished this book. He had many health problems. He had a heart attack that nearly killed him. He was hospitalized for a very long time. Um, there's a whole bunch of lore around the publication of this book and people being affected by accidents and health conditions and just all negative shit. Um, anyways, though, Mr. Anson did very, very few signings. This book came from someone in California whose parents got it signed. Um, he had two, so he was able to buy one. Thank God I caught him at the right time. Um, he died right after this came out. He started to write his second book. Uh, it was called 666. It was another one uh, that was going to be, you know, kind of the same type of element with the dark, the dark type of stuff around it. Uh, he died. He never finished that book. <laughs> no kidding. Do you still got it, though? I mean, you must still got it in your collection. Oh, this fucking guy showed me his book collection earlier. Oh, original. He's got quite the book collection for sure, too. Oh, my God. What nice pieces. Now, he's been dead for about 50 years. She, your cat's a skid mark on your life. <laughs> wow, that's some good. Wow. She's so fucking entertaining, this isn't she? This, this stuff that you collect, this isn't just your run-of-the-mill shit. I mean, obviously, I mean, you could probably find some good shit at flea markets and thrift stores, but a lot of the stuff you seek out on eBay or you seek out personally from Tony and from Nesper, uh, these signed plates and stuff like that. Like, Judy just found this, what, like a month ago, two months ago, some of this stuff, right? The Eds? Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, me and Heather, I don't have it on me right now. Shit, I wanted to wear it. Me and Heather both got her animal. Actually, Heather's got two. Her bracelets that she made with Lorraine's jewelry. I'm sure you must have a couple of those. Um, we got a couple. I had the dog tag from Jimmy and stuff. Um, we got invited, and we're going to be... Oh, I shouldn't say anything. Ah, fuck it. We're going to be at Warren Paracon, too. We got Historically Haunted's going to have a table there. Uh, next year's Paracon with the... Oh, there she is. There's the shit talker. What's up? Um, <laughs> I can't have you on a keyboard now. He's following her. Oh, shit. Um, but no, that's cool. <laughs> Hit him on camera. Uh, he spun around the floor like a curly. <laughs> like a curly cue. 
Oh, uh, still can't hear Dil. I oh, still can't hear a word Dylan's saying. I don't know. I can hear you good. Maybe, um, maybe turn it up and I'll try to talk. I keep, I keep saying I'm gonna talk low and I don't. I'm a very loud person. My, my mic volume's up all the way. Yeah. Leo, can you hear me good? You can you guys out there? I know I know Patricia seems to be having a hard time. You guys seem to be Dylan is a little lower than mine, maybe. Or maybe the voices in my head are just loud. I don't know. <laughs> oh shit. So so um yeah, we'll have to hook up together. Jimmy, are you watching Jim? Oh, I got that sticker on my car. I got that sticker of him next to UFO Fred, and I say they're my co-pilots. That's that's gonna stay there forever. Don't ever move. Don't ever move that. Best co-pilots. Both of them. Yes. I go. I, I said with God, Jimmy, and Fred on my team, we have enough for a basketball team. <laughs> well, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'll put up against anybody. Too. You can get my wife to come join you too. Well, she needs something to do. So. Uh oh, Leo's calling you low. Says you need to get high. No, I, I, I think he's talking about the audio. Oh, whoops. Could you uh, I think he there? did. Cody, can you come here for a sec? Can you fucking figure this out and put it on speaker? Because Leo's saying that he can't hear. Jimmy Meatballs. Hi, Mrs. Gray. <laughs> Uh, my lady wants to say hi to your lady. Say hi to Hater. How does it sound now? Oh, my fucking word. Way better. You're a miracle worker. See why oh, we yeah. have girls? See why we have wives in our lives? Talk. Hey, hey, hey. Give me a time machine. We're going back a half fucking hour. Let's do all it. right. That's all right. Just, re just reason to bring you back next time. We can go longer. I don't give a shit. I'm allowed 30 hours a week. What do I do? Four hours a week? So anyway, killer. This is Dylan, everybody. Dylan Gray. He reached maturity during my show. He hit his puby, puberty. Take a hit with me, Dylan. Celebrate. You can hear you. Take a hit. Cheers. It's not crack, everybody. It's marijuana. There she is. Oh, Holy she wants shit. to show you the cat. You're She's going to show you the other cat. Is... Oh, let's see the baby. Oh, my God. You get three of them. Look at this cutie. Oh, that's a big girl. Totally. Bella. Bella, look at look look right there, sweetie. Hi, Bella. Hi, Bella. You're adorable. Oh, I love animals more than people. I mean, you guys are cool. <laughs> but I mean, for the most Don't part, we But for the most part, cats, dogs, birds. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us for a whole half second. We love you all in chat, by the way. Keep it up. Oh, look at that. People are happy. Might... People are happy. Good, they put. Perfect, he put. You said perfect. Yes. Oh, cutest nose. Who, me, Dylan, or the cat, Liz? You're going to have to specify. <laughs> I mean, mine is kind of nice. Well, Dylan's is nice, too. He's just sophisticated. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, can you do me a favor? Can you um whip out? Do you have anything from Lorraine? Oh, not the mama. Do you have anything from Lorraine? Lorraine didn't paint though, did she or nothing? She did paint. Do you have anything? Can you hear me well from when I'm sitting? Because right now I'm about I'm about three or four feet away from my phone. I hear you better than I've heard you the whole show right now, and that's no fucking lie. Oh, Shout out well, to thank my wife, then. Terrible. Thank my wife. I, I did. I said, without well, fucking wives, dude, my old lady saves me all the time. So uh, shout out to Paranormal Study. Head. I had Tim Woolsworth on last week, last night. They, they're they really cool people. So uh, yeah. where do you stand on on uh, anything of anything seen out there for, like, sea monsters, cryptids, aliens, anything out there, USOs, anything like that? Do I have any... Anything Are, that has to any... do with that? Yeah, have no. You any stories? No. No, I've I've never had the chance to see Bigfoot or or any of the like, unfortunately. I heard by Martha's Vineyard there's mermaids and shit scene. I don't know if maybe you, 
there was tales of sea monsters or giant squids or mermaids by Plymouth. Um, that shit's terrifying. I like it. I mean, I had to go looking for for mermaids. Invite her home. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, we, we we like to do that shit because we. I don't know. Growing up in Maine, of course, the Wendigo, Stephen King. You got all this talk of Bigfoots, and it's very intriguing. And Betty and Barney had pay, uh, Hill. You got oh, look at that little guy. Is that the guy from? Um, Break the bunny. So the bunny from uh, Darny Darko. Yeah. That movie's a fucking trip. That dude was in uh, Requiem from a Dream, too. Yep. Great actor. The, the cat's nose, He's... but your guys' noses are cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> you want my nose, don't you? Uh, know you? She just wants me from my nose. I need a Binks, but I can't get any more animals. Oh, Jesus Christ. She wants another cat, dude. Oh, whoop it. No censorship. Perfect, he says. Heather's Perfect. Says, yeah. If you look at Heather's picture, that's the movie Annabelle from the Warren Con. That's the one that was in the uh, Annabelle Tree. Tres. I'll make it four. I can be a bozo. <laughs> Her name is Bellatrix. Bellatrix. Oh, Bellatrix. Hey, I like that. Uh, I like that Dream Warriors Freddy poster in the background. Is that Dream Warriors or is that the first Freddy? I'm trying to think. That's the original one, and if you want me to show it to you closer, I can. It has a few autographs on it. Ooh, you fucking right, I do. Especially if it's autographs. I, yeah. I haven't met. I haven't met Kruger yet. I haven't met anybody from that movie. That's the one dark horse for me. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Oh, wow, tripping. Oh, wow. Look at that beauty. Nice frame. You got a little Freddy up there keeping guard. Well, who's the gold autograph for the top by the scissors by the scissor hands? Um, let's see right here. Well, Robert signed it twice down here because he said he oh. didn't like this. Just this one signature wasn't good enough for him. So he did it again with the different colors right there. He did a double signature. Freddy Krueger himself, Robert England. Yeah. Wow. And this is, um, this is Heather Lagan camp right here. Who is Nancy, of yeah. course, the main character. Everybody knows. And this was uh, Amanda Wiss, I believe is how you pronounce her last name. She's Tina. She's the one that um, was dragged across the ceiling. Everyone knows that scene. It's a classic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your wife, your wife says he was a big pain in the ass. It was the worst line she ever waited in. Funny face. Laugh face with a tear face. Oh, my God. Her antics oh, will get you views. <laughs> so my seven heads. Oh my fucking god! You're keeping the good stuff from me. Let's go. I want to see you on CSI. I want if you end no. up getting arrested, I want to be the show that does it. Let's do it. <laughs> you make me famous off arrest, having you arrested for having severed heads. Let's do it. Um, just kidding. I bail you out. I bail you out. I hope so. Severed I have heads. something that is. Uh, it's an archetypal piece of the Italian Renaissance that was done around 1500 by uh, someone named Leonardo de Demon. This is called the, uh, the Reagan Lisa. Oh my God. Look at that beauty. Heather, is that not my favorite show shirt? The picture of her. As, I mean, what a movie one of, of one. its time. Still the fucking scariest movie. You watch The Exorcist alone in the woods or something, you're fucking brave. Oh, look at this shit. Straight off the fucking... Vitaly. I know that guy. Pizzano. Eric's a good shit. Yes, Eric's he is. Eric's a good, good shit. I know he's yes, a busy he is. dude. He's going to be... He's gonna be on my show. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to go visual because his face is so fucking good looking. He didn't want to break the camera, so he's gonna do audio only. We're probably gonna talk about Metallica for ninety five fucking percent of the time. But There's nothing wrong with that. I don't care about Metallica. He's seen him like three hundred times. That's gonna be yeah. a historically haunted show on a Friday night coming up. I forget the date offhand. He probably should know. I forget now. I tried getting the old lady Patricia to come on. She don't want to. So it's gonna be just him. I think it's maybe you should right. say you should you should say to the people uh, what Eric does and what team he's on. That's true because not everybody knows us. You, um, that's right. Eric's been on. She's a lot. Some teams. Eric's been around for a while. He's been on shows, but he's best known for, or I should say, we, we all love him for where he is currently is for Nesper. 
Um, yep. I believe he's the youngest member of, of, Met, of the yes. member of NESPER, New England Society for Paranormal Research, that uh, um, probably my favorite couple of, besides my parents, <laughs> Ed and Lorraine Warren, um, started. And, and yep. really, Ed and Lorraine took what, and, and Hans Holzer, for the most part, but pe they took what people thought was fucking nuts and you would be crazy for it and turn it into a profession, turn it into a multi-million dollar TV and movies business, as much as it's kind of that isn't what it's about. But they really, were it's opened doors. yeah, it's opened doors for all of us, for, for demonologists, for paranormal investigators, for ghost hunters, for, for just collectors, for people that are intrigued yep. by that stuff. So uh, I don't know where I was going with this. I had a reason, right? <laughs> Shit. Where was I going, Dylan? Help me out. <laughs> I don't remember. You oh, Eric. Soon Eric the the first one. But anyway, I'm going to have Eric on soon. Eric's the shit. Oh, Evil Dead. You know, that was made up for like $10,000, and it was supposed to be just like a project, and it turned out to be a yeah, cult classic. That's in my top five. I mean, oh, I mean, Army of Darkness is great, too. They made a great franchise, but the very first one, the remake is pretty terrifying. Oh, when, you're fr when your whole crew is looking fresh as fuck. The Hellraiser crew, Pinhead. Some angels to some, demons to others. Wow. Oh man, you got me beat. Uh, I got some. I got Texas Chainsaw. Sorry. <laughs> but that's some. Oh man, is that Hitchcock? Oh, Psycho. Oh man, I grew up on Alfred Hitchcock and and. Uh... Oh, good evening. Everybody likes a good murder, provided they're not the victim. Oh man, Psycho with Ed Gein and uh, there's there's my homies. Is that the guy from uh, uh, Beetlejuice? Oh no, that's the original Halloween when he kills his sister, right? The yes. The rat, the uh, blanket, yeah. Um. Oh, so people are talking. Leo says, show him Courtney's wedding picture. Oh, you got Jamie Lee Curtis? Yeah. What's up with Courtney's wedding picture? Are you trying to stab her in or something? Yeah. Courtney, what's he talking about, your wedding picture? The one with the knife? The one with the knife. <laughs> what the hell? Courtney. I'm liking, I'm liking you by the second. You know that. Oh, Adam's family signed. Shit. Yeah, I'm we met. Oh. This was from two different ones. This was from a Rhode Island Comic Con. We took it to meet uh, Christina Ritchie and then a Boston Comic Con for uh, Christopher Lloyd. Oh, that's my girl's. That's my girl's girl crush, Christina Ritchie, especially from Sleepy Hollow and stuff. Look at that. Yeah, she's fine as wow. fuck. Yeah. Wow. Um, severed heads. People want to know what's up with that. Lauren Perez, Danny Perez, right up Danny's alley. Severed heads. You got to show that, brother. You're straying away from the severed heads. <laughs> People want to see that morbid shit. What do you got? Oh, look at that, little Jason. Remake of Evil Dead. Yeah, Eric for sure. Beetlejuice. Oh, Gremlins. We watched it the other night, huh, Heather? Mm -hmm. Pinhead. Is that the Kraken? Yeah. Elvira. That is um, the Lovecraft. Uh, Cthulhu. Yeah, I call it Cthulhu. Yes, that's right. I've been to H.P. Lovecraft's grave. and his. I've been there a couple died. times myself. Yeah, Providence, Rhode Island. That's killer. No shit. Yeah, Swan Point Cemetery. Very serene yep. place. It's funny, Chucky's based off Robert the Doll, which is in Tampa. I'd like to see him. Oh, a little, a little pack. Oh, a little ghost box. Egon, yeah. a re red stay buffed. He, yeah, that's that's the chase version. He's supposed to be the burnt one after he got, you know, incinerated. Oh, did you see the movie? What did you think of the Afterlife movie? I haven't seen it yet, but I don't. Oh, dude, are you I, serious? I haven't heard anything bad about it. Well, people talk shit. People are mad because certain things you get, you know it. 
but I don't care, dude. I literally laughed, I cried. It's this. I'm not gonna ruin it, but it's the same score. The, the, yeah. the it takes off from the first one almost, as far as like the music in the background. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that piece. Oh, I like that piece. Is that the head that he smashes? Yes. Oh, people gave that movie shit too because he killed the firefighters and the gay couple and stuff. Well, I fucking I loved care, it, so I don't care either. I love. I I go by my own. I love Halloween. <coughs> Look at that. You guys liking his connection? Is a collection? Uh, Patricia says good night, all. Great show. Share it to all the groups. All right. These comments are delayed. I send that with a gun. Uh, Oh shit. Oh, your cousin Leo wants us to end the show with live from New York at Saturday Night Live. Well, technically, it's live from Maine. I'm broadcasting it in Maine. Look at that. Is that a, what was that? A big penis? That's Our Pazuzu. Penis? I don't know that one. <laughs> Brody's obsessed with, with what, Liz? It, with, this kid, Brody, this next door neighbor of Heather's, where I, we live here in Old Orchard Beach, Saco area, Maine. Oh, I love that. Her as a duck. This kid, first time I ever seen him, came out dressed like Chucky. Got to be about six, seven, eight, nine years old at the time. And he's all obsessed with horror movies, so that's cool. Leo says, Big John. Thanks for watching, Patricia. Have a good night. Check us out every Saturday. Um, look at this guy's collection, dude. Um, every Saturday night we have next week. I should know this by heart, but I don't know who we have next week. But I know Christmas we're going to have pretty much all, all of the War and Legacy. We're going to have five me members of the War and Legacy Foundation. Kenneth Torres um, and a bunch of others. Christmas night. And then New Year's Day for a two-hour episode, January 1st, 2022. We're going to have the, the Dylan's Unicorn, uh, Chris McKennell, the grandson, the one and only son of what Judy Warren, the grandson of Ed and Lorraine Warren, huh? What, what are you showing there, dude? You can explain shit too. I'm not okay, trying to over overdo, overdo it. No, oh, I just I didn't want I didn't want to over talk. I'm not. I mean, I don't no, want no, to no. talk over you. Well, no, it's my bad. We got about ten minutes left, so I'm trying to plug the shows. But please elaborate on some of that shit. Go back to some of that Warren type stuff, like um, the one right before this. Oh, oh look at that. Hi, yeah, he signed, that was the name of he the He signed that at a uh, horror convention. I got it with the Ooh, COA, geez. too. That's George Lutz. Wow, everybody. Uh, anybody watching? Uh, well, I know who George Lutz is. You want to explain who George Lutz might be to people who are fairly new? Uh, he is. He was the father in the family that suffered the uh, Amityville horror. And also, we've got some other stuff here to go from. You watch, you watch Amityville type documentaries or, or uh, a couple of the first movies that his yeah, family portrayed. One. And there's Lorraine. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. soul. There's Ed's face right in the right, the sideburns. That's yep. them inside Amityville at the kitchen table. Is that right? That's correct. Wow. So, this one here was taken by their um, photographer that worked with them at the time, Paul Bartz. And he denied that he ended up taking it because of all the flack that came out from it. This is the uh, the infamous um, the Ghost Boy, and what Ed's um, interpretation of it was that it was a demonic image. It was just uh, the way that the demon was uh, toying with the people per se, and it it, it, it took on the image of uh, the son from the DeFeo family that got murdered there. No one's ever been able to explain it, but it sure as hell looks like a little boy to me. Yeah. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, William DeFeo, he just passed away in prison, actually, recently. But um, yeah. a night back then, he shot his whole family in their sleep. Brothers, there he is. Ronald, I'm sorry. Ronald Ronald Butch DeFeo Jr. Shot his yep. mom, his dad, and his younger brothers and sisters with shotgun blasts to the heads in their sleep. It's a fucking trading card. Um, yeah, he died in prison. And uh, that house, man, uh, they changed some of the windows around. They changed the number of street location. It's still there, though. The boathouse and everything. And that's one of the most, that's my bucket list. Have you ever been there? Have you been to the street address just outside at all? No, I have not. 
I'm gonna I would love to. Though. We're going to ride one day this summer. I'm going to pick you up. We're going to make a road trip out of it. Let's fucking do it. We'll get a hotel in Sleepy Hollow, New York, and go see the Headless Horseman and try to conjure his ass up, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about the... Oh, look at this man. For those of you who don't know, it's sweatshirt says it all. But, Dylan, you want to explain the godfather of paranormal, please? Uh, we wouldn't be talking right now without this man. No. We wouldn't. I wouldn't be doing this. No. Ghostbusters wouldn't be a movie. Dan Aykroyd looked up to him. That's a fact. He I Dan Aykroyd. is the fourth, one of the forefathers of the paranormal for us on this side of the world. And uh, he's my favorite. He's my most, um, I think he's the most interesting out of them all. He is, he's a big uh, influence on me. And then we've got his wife. Who survived a horrific, I believe his ship went down. He's one of the one of the very few survivors back in the in the army in the war. Yeah. Remember, right? Look at Lorraine in front of the pumpkins. Oh man. Now, I've got some something really here. Stuff. I've got something here that was given to me. I don't I don't really show this one off too much. Um it was given to me by an investigator um, who worked with them uh, for some time in the 90s. Um, this is handwritten by Ed. You can you can tell that it's 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 his writing. <coughs> Excuse me. The White Lady of Union Cemetery, yeah, um, in Easton, Connecticut. Me and Heather have been there. Heather's cover photo for a while was a white mist. Um, and Ed talked about that being his literally, I believe it's his favorite cemetery. And the book Graveyard that he wrote is mainly about that cemetery and the white lady. And yeah. how there's been Native American scene there. Um, the meeting house, which is a church next to Union Cemetery, there was a body found in the pit. But the white lady in 1995 in Lorraine tape. That's his, so that's that his handwriting. Home, Unfucking real. He that's that could be in a museum if there was a paranormal museum. Your house is half a paranormal museum, my friend. Wow. It is really. That's Ed Lorraine. That's Ed's writing, Heather. Heather just said, "Wow, she's obsessed with Ed and Lorraine too." I think a lot of people are, and it's not that we're all oh Ed and Lorraine, but they really are. Just look at that. So this the is the one. Um, I went wow. to Connecticut. And I got these ones recently. This is my 12th one and my 13th one. I haven't shown these to anyone yet, but I told you I'd, I'd put them on the show for you first. So this is the first time that the world's ever seen them for quite a while because Judy had these um, stashed away and she just dug them out of storage and didn't even know that they were there. And here they are. That's what you were telling me about that she recently found. And that's numbered 13 as well. Isn't that funny? Ironic. Is that correct? The this one is number 12. I'm going to show you 13 right now. Okay, but you do have 13, which is your 13. That's funny. Yes. I like that number. I want to keep it at that number. Look at that. This one has the sticker on the back, too, the original by Warren sticker. To think that he did such tremendous work and research, but also found the time to be such an exquisite painter with detail. It's the man. Well, for people that didn't get a chance to meet him, which I didn't, but no. unreal. Do you do you feel like with all the research you've done on him, do you feel like he's portrayed well in the Conjuring series and Annabelle and all that stuff? Do you feel like that Patrick guy plays Ed decent? Yes, yes, he does. I mean, I never met Ed myself, but well, but I'm sure you've watched things with Tony and all that shit. They used to interview him. Yes, and Ed yes. carries himself in the same manner. I feel. I feel yes. like Ed's a joke. He's a tough. He's a jokester, but he's very stern and very all about it. And he loved Lorraine. That was his yep. shining light. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm not one to really to look as as people as as false idols, but I really try to drum to the same beat as Nesper, and I know you do too. I really try to follow that, especially with my investigations. Me being an investigator, researcher, I treat things dead or alive with respect. And I think that's the biggest thing. 
you don't have to be friends with everybody or like everybody, but at least be fucking decent and at least try to help the ones that you can and, and, and be open minded. And I feel like you're open minded. Um, we're four minutes past. I didn't even pay attention. So we got to go. Um, so where can people find you? I know it's on Instagram. You want to plug that real quick before we take off? Yeah, it's um, High Horror Collector, and it's just High Horror Together, and then an underscore collector. And then there's the I Facebook like, group. I like, not H-I, like hi, but I like, oh, I'm H-I-G-H, <laughs> High Horror Collector. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, shit, that hour went by quick. Um, yeah, so yeah. I'm going to try to see you. You're going to write in the future. So look for that. Follow him on Facebook. He's pretty personal. He's kind of quiet. He may not let you in at first because he doesn't trust people. I'm the same way. Um, I'm at like 300 friends now. You think I'd have a thousand, but I don't. I'm very skeptical who I let in, but, um, but you can follow him. Um, and like I said, on at least Instagram, I'm sure he'll let you go in and see his collection. Uh, I've been personally invited to come down and try some of his, uh, look at his collection in person and, and hang out and, Check out the cemetery and Plymouth Rock, all that good shit. So, Dylan, thank you so much for being my guest. Thank you, everybody in thank chat. You. Courtney Gray, your wife, uh, Patricia Santosino, Leo Powers, the cousin, Liz LaTerrier, um, Leo Powers, uh, Heather Caminiti from Witch and Light. Hey, catch me here every Saturday, uh, Saturday 9 p.m. Eastern, right on BB3 uh, Network, historically on the podcast. You never know who we're going to talk to, what's going on. Dylan, fucking love you, dude. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, on behalf of Appreciate on behalf you. of Dylan Gray, uh, I'm you. Adam Began, and we're out. Thank you guys so much. I'll give you the hard copy tomorrow. No, no pun intended. Till next time, later, guy. Have a good night, guys. Peace. Keep rocking. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate the support. I know I'm stumbling, mumbling, sputtering a little bit. Um, it's all new to me. It's my second show. It'll get better. I promise. Keep watching, keep supporting. I fucking see it and I watch it and I appreciate it. Thank you, um, Dylan. Dylan, thank you. Thank you, Courtney. The three Bs. Um, great job, guys. Thank you, Liz. I appreciate it. We're trying hard here. This ain't scripted. I don't have anybody following me. I'm not in a fancy studio. I'm just kind of sitting at home chilling, trying to figure out what's going on. So appreciate you. Have a good night. Keep rocking. Learn some history. And we're in